So we've talked about the ALU instructions, we've talked about the load store instructions, and because there are sort of three kinds of instructions in any assembly language, any modern uh, reduced instructions at assembly language, we have uh, data processing instructions, we have data movement instructions, and then we have choices. We have branch and jump. Uh, there's a fourth category that sort of um, support instructions like syscall and stuff like that. We'll get to those in a second. But for now, I want to talk about the branch and jump instructions. So we have uh, branch instructions are here. And then these are system instructions, which we'll talk about in a second. And then down here, I've got my jump instructions. And so we'll talk about why they're separated in a second. Uh, but first, branch instructions. Uh, now, I've got a small bug in my sheet. The branch instructions are B format, and uh, I don't have that written there, but the opcode is 1100011, and the format is B. So the branch format is a special format, looks like this. Uh, you'll notice we have two registers, RS2 and RS1, just like the S uh, format for store, um, because we're going to compare those two registers and then decide whether or not to branch. Uh, function three tells us how we're going to compare those registers, and then as with the uh, save or uh, as with the store instruction, the immediate value that's going to be the offset from the program counter is constructed in a bit of an unusual way. And again, the the reason for this is to make Risk Five extensible, to make it possible to do 16-bit, 32-bit, and more. Um, but let's look at what the instructions are first, and then we'll talk about how the offset to the program counter is calculated. So branches look like this. Program counter gets um, the program counter plus the immediate value, which is calculated in a bit of a weird way, if, and then we look at our three-bit function code, 000 is branch equal. That's branch if RS1 is equal to RS2. So the ALU will subtract them, and if the result is zero, then it'll add the immediate value to the program counter, and that'll be your next instruction. And if not, then it won't do the addition and your next instruction is just PC+. Um, so then branch not equal, obviously. And then we have these uh, four variants, BLT, BGE, BLTU, and BGEU. So this is less than and then greater equal. And then we have less than unsigned and greater equal unsigned. And on my sheet, I put a little circle. I uh, don't know if you can tell, a little circle over top of the less than to show it's less than unsigned. And so it'll be an unsigned compare instead of a signed compare. And so it's all the same, right? The, the function is the same. We take those two registers, we compare them, and then we add the immediate value if the result is true. Now, in the B format, what is that immediate value? Well, it's a little bit funky. Um, this has immediate value 12, and then 10 through 5, and then this is immediate value 4 through 1, and then 11. So there's bits all over the place. You've got 4 through 1, and then bit 11, and then bit 12, and then bits 10 through 5. Over here, in the construction of the, the immediate value for a branch, we've got uh, the instruction at bit 7, and then bits 30 through 25, and then bits 11 through 8, and then a zero. Why a zero? Well, because instructions are four bytes long, right? 32-bit instructions are four bytes long, and we want to be able to byte align uh, this, this branch. There's no reason to encode that last zero. In fact, those last two zeros, because if the instruction, if the program counter is here, the next instruction or any legitimate, legitimate branch is going to be four bytes away, because memory is in bytes, and 32 bits are four bytes. Now you might ask, why one zero, why not two zeros, right? If you learned MIPS, um, you know that when you do the pseudo direct um, instruction format for jumping, the last two bits are guaranteed to be zero because instructions are word aligned, right? The last two bits of any instruction address are always zero, zero because instructions are 32 bits long and they always line up that way. Now we only have one zero here because there's a 16 bit version of RISC-V and so they're only you know, two word or two byte aligned instead of four byte aligned. So we encode that zero. That works for 16 bit, 32 bit, and everything else. We lose a little bit of extra uh, oomph because we could have encoded two zeros, but this is going to be as good as we're going to get. Uh, and then we do bits eight through 11 of the instruction of the immediate value. Um, and then we have this seven through 30 
or uh, sorry, sorry, bit seven and then bit 30 through 25. And this, this one bit here is because of this zero. We're shifting everything over a little bit. And so bit seven, we have to put it sort of in the other place. It's a little funky. And again, most of the time we don't think about it because the assembler will do this for us. It'll choose the address of the label that we're branching to, and it'll calculate all where all those bits are gonna be to give you that offset. And then it'll put it all together. Uh, and then we sign it, sign extend, bit 31 again of the instruction because bit 31 of the instruction you'll see is always going to be almost always always going to be the sign bit for the resulting immediate value so again in here any instruction that has an immediate value it's going to be up against bit 31 and that top bit is going to be the sign bit uh, and this is why the branch instruction that top bit is actually immediate bit 12 because that's the last bit of the 12-bit immediate field that's going to be added to the program counter. And then that bit also is the sign bit that gets extended out. So again, putting things in different places, but the end result is we get an extra bit of distance for our jump because we're going to put in that zero. So a little bit of complexity, but that's not the end of the world. So that's branches. Um, jumps, on the other hand, we have two variants. Jumps have their own format again. Uh, the opcode is 1101111. And one one zero zero one one one. Nope, I missed it. Here we are. Um, so one one zero one 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 and one one zero zero one 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 for the two different variants of jump. Both of these are actually implemented as jump and link. There is no jump instruction. If you want to do jump and link, you just say I'm going to use register zero as my link register, and then everything's fine. You're not actually linking in that case. Um, and we'll talk about that just just a tiny bit more in just one second. Uh, but we implement everything as jump and link and then you'll see why. Um, so there are two variants. There's an immediate version and then there's a register version. Oh, I might have these backwards. Uh, the J format is the jump immediate version. Nope, that's correct. The Im jump immediate version. And what we have is a destination register, RD. Uh, and then all of the rest of this stuff is just immediate value. How does that work? Well. Uh, the J format, again, one RD destination register, and then a whole lot of stuff. And what we're doing is jump and link. Um, again, we're going to specify a register to store the current value of the program counter. That's going to be RD. And usually that's going to be our return address, which if we go and check our register file, the return address is usually X1 or register 1. So if we're going to jump and link, then we specify our return address that we're going to save to, and then our immediate value is going to be the offset to the program counter. So this huge immediate value is going to be the offset to our program counter. And again, it's assembled in a bit of a funky way, and you're going to start to get the feeling of why, right? For our jump instruction, all of these blah, 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 all this weird stuff is so that we can get a zero at the bottom and then an extensible version of this jump address as far as we can from the program counter. So that's uh, jump and link. And again, we can look at individually uh, the bit 20 and then bit 10 through one and then bit 11 and then bit 19 through 12. And the whole point is if we're only using 16 bit addresses and 16 bit machine, then 19 through 12 is gonna do it for us. But if we've got a 32 bit, then all this other stuff, we've gotta put the sign bit in the right place. All that shuffling is so that it can be zero and then extensible, 16 bits, 32 bits, etc. So that's the immediate version, uh, which is called jump and link, the J format. And then a little bit, unfortunately, the register version of jump and link, jump and link register is actually encoded in immediate format. And that's because our, our immediate format, which again is our ALU immediate format, actually has two registers. Right? The jump immediate format has one register. That's the, des that's the return address. Jump register, which is where you're actually going to jump not to the program counter plus an immediate value, but to some register that you've constructed, which could be anywhere in the memory space. Right? And you do that if you want to get further than your program counter plus a, an immediate value. Uh, we use I format for that because there are two registers here. Uh, and that's going to look like this. Uh, jump and link register, again, you specify the return address, and then you specify a base register, which contains the new address, and you can put an offset there if you want to, because immediate format, just like with load store, immediate format allows us to do an offset. 
Uh, but often when you're doing jump and link, you've spent some time constructing the uh, link address in some register, and then you don't need to do an offset from that because you're just going to the subroutine, which is somewhere out there in memory space. So those are the two versions of jump. One is uh, the destination register gets the PC, PC plus four, because we're returning to the next instruction after the jump, of course. And then the program counter gets incremented by the immediate value. That's the J format, which is called immediate jump. And then the other format, uh, again, the destination register gets PC plus four, that's saving the return address. And then program counter gets the value that's in the new address, in the new register, plus the immediate value. So jump and link register is I format, jump and link immediate is J format. Those are our two jump variants and all of our branch variants.